Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to the Potterverse. It's a podcast dedicated to the film and book universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners, let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. Here we are in the title chapter of this book. My name's Mary Larson. My name's Blake. You know, and I've only been oh, enchanted by one woman in my life. Aww. And she just happens to be sitting across the way from Aww, me. Oh, I just am Harvila. Like totally. <laughs> it's the silver hair. Utterly enchanted. It is the silver <laughs> hair. <laughs> well, you are way too kind, my love. And I am so well, uh, blessed to be able to be here chatting about all things Potter. We're in this jam-packed chapter. So we're going to be moving along pretty swimmingly. But here it is, chapter 16. The Goblet of Fire, which I just love looking at where it is in the book itself because it's, right. <laughs> it's kind of like two thirds of the way through. And here we are. It's only Halloween. Only Halloween. And the Triwizard Tournament hasn't even begun well, yet. Well, we're not two thirds of the way I mean, through. One third. Sorry. Yeah, one third like, of the way through. Yeah, maybe a little but bit more. But still. Yeah. But still. We're probably just short of half. Correct. Yeah. I would agree. Maybe like a five, uh, a th- three eighths. <laughs> sure. What ifs? <laughs> I'm not a mathematician. Mary, calm down. Exactly. Dumbledore now took out his wand and tapped three times upon the top of the casket. The lid creaked slowly open. Dumbledore reached inside it and pulled out a large, roughly hewn wooden cup. Remind you of anything? Indiana Jones. Oh, he chose poorly. (laughs) It would have been entirely unremarkable had it not been full to the brim with dancing blue-white flames. Dumbledore closed the casket and placed the goblet carefully on top of it, where it would be clearly visible to everyone in the hall. Anybody wishing to submit themselves as champion must write their name and school clearly on a slip of parchment and drop it into the goblet, said Dumbledore. Aspiring champions have 24 hours in which to put their names forward. Tomorrow night, Halloween, the goblet will return the names of the three it has judged most worthy to represent their schools. The goblet will be placed in the entrance hall tonight. And there it will be freely accessible to all those wishing to compete. (sighs) Dumbledore in this chapter kind of rules. I'm not going to lie. He's the host with the most. He, he, you know, he just gets it done. And he just allows the kids to just be idiots and and just say, sorry, told you. Oh, have done it. oh, okay. I thought you were in regards to what I what I just read. So okay, well, now yeah, I'm I mean, yes, yes, but yes, he's. This is when book and film Dumbledore start to veer right at the end of this chapter. <laughs> I'm not even at the yeah. end of this chapter. Up until then, we're we're kind of in the same bit. But he is. He's just this kind of whimsical, quirky, magnificent man he that is, we enjoy. the The book version of Dumbledore is certainly more in line with the Dumbledore of the past mm-hmm. in the books. And you're right, Mary. This is when I think... And and by, by this point in the film, we really haven't even seen Dumbledore all that much. Not really. Like, And it's already... We're already at a, at a fork in the road. Because in the movies, I feel like you begin the school year and this is what's happening. They don't necessarily wait until Halloween. So it just has a very different feeling to yeah. it. So we get up. Uh, we actually start well, this chapter. Hold on. Oh, yeah. I get, I get, oh, we got to okay, play the sound. We got yes, things to I'm do. I'm so excited. What are we doing here? So excited. Killing me, Marvin. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. Now you can go. All right. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. You gotta hear the music. I know, I know. Um, Killing so me. We're here, as I said, chapter 16. Um, the little synopsis, uh, of course, is that the Triwizard Tournament is beginning. The students of Beaubaton and Durmstrang have filed on in. We know where everybody's sleeping. There's no questions about that, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but the whole school is a flutter. And the kids get to put their names inside the Goblet of Fire, some successfully, some unsuccessfully. And at the end, 
we actually have four wizards whose names are taken out of the Goblet of Fire. <sighs> right. It's, uh, not great, Harry. <laughs> no, not, not great, That Harry. should be the new sound. <laughs> not great, Harry. Ooh. But just, you know, for, for the sake of posterity, if I could find... There it is. Not great, Bob. You know, it's like... <laughs> I just I always keep picturing different shirt ideas. Blake, of course, designs a lot of shirts for the Mary and Blake store dot com. Oh, yeah. um, Thank and you very much. One of them that I think Shameless would be plug. so fun is like a picture of the Goblet of Fire with a little piece of paper that says Harry Potter and right underneath it, awkward with a period. <laughs> <laughs> or not great, Harry. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's something like that. Yeah. Something along those lines. I just lines. feel like non Potterverse people might not understand the not great Harry bit. Yeah, that's true. But that's okay. It's fine. But awkward. <laughs> awkward, yes. Uh... <laughs> or it should just be the picture of Michael Scott's face. I don't know how like, that would be on a shirt. But like... him holding him holding uh, like the, the Harry Potter. Yeah, I don't know how that would go, <laughs> my love. I adore you. So anyway, as I said, uh... we, we pick up in this chapter on October 30th. Okay, so this is when Bobatons and Durmstrang students are arise- arriving. And Ron is just tickled pink that Victor Crumb is here. He wants yeah. his autograph. You overhear the six six year girl students saying like, "Oh my gosh, I don't have a quill. Like, can I borrow some lipstick so he can sign something?" Yeah. Everyone is pumped that Victor Crumb is on Hogwarts grounds. And the way that they characterize Victor Crumb in the book seems very different than what it is in the film. Oh, in the film, he seems like a big. Well, he seems like a big guy. Okay. In the book, he seems like a skinny, slight kid almost. I, I didn't like. Okay, I wasn't. I wasn't watching the movie, being like, "This isn't Victor." No, no, no. I know. I'm just saying, like, there again, there are some really big adaptive choices, mm-hmm. and even the way that like Karkaroff treats Crumb, being like, "Hey, you want some wine?" and the kid being like, "I'll, I'll take some wine." And, and, I will. And, and he's like, "No, get out of here. Who are you? Who, who are you? Get out of here." Yeah. You know, like that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I thought that was quite funny. Quite funny. This I whole agree. characterization. I concur. So, you know, we get already. What's what's interesting is that we obviously don't spend uh tons and tons of time getting to understand Durmstrang and Bobatons, but um just where they sit, you kind of get their vibe. Yeah, the Bobaton Bobaton going with Ravenclaw. Mm-hmm. And you know, and again, it, it just this all feels pretty indicative of the schools mm-hmm. that are they're coming from. I mean, the, the Durmstrang going with the Slytherin and just Slytherin feels more masculine. I just it just does, I think, in, t- in my opinion. And in my opinion, Ravenclaw feels more feminine. What does that matter? Well, because they're co-ed school. Uh, but I, I know. But the way that the book is characterizing them, it just Bobaton with the gold uh, with the gold and the blue and how everything just feels so like we were talking about i think what it was uh, last chapter it was last chapter we were talking about how uh the author gives us a feel for what these schools are okay um and you know again uh bobaton coming down from the heavens and mm-hmm. durmstrang coming up from you know the, below the earth it just feels durmstrang and even the name durmstrang it's it's like it feels almost uh, uh, germanic in nature mm-hmm. and it just feels more um conflicted it feels more harsh durmstrang you know like it almost okay. reminds me of like duhast you know that, that horrible song um so i just i like how these I like how this, the schools are are aligning themselves with houses. And you know what, Mary too? Some I'm gonna I'm gonna say something here. I think it's gonna surprise you. Oh man. The movie really misses the Vila aspect. It really does. And I'll tell you why. Because it's important to have um who we now know. Oh uh, as um Floor. Floor, thank you. Who we now know, Florida, at this point, it's Flor Delacour who, you know, enchants Ron. Yes. Um, and she's part Vila. Yes. And there's a whole argument about it. And I, I wish the, the movie had this aspect. Do you agree? Potentially, but honestly, there's so much to pack into here that... I don't see how it would have really worked because the Vila in general are not brought into the story. Mm-hmm. 
at all in the movie. No, no, I know. That's what I'm saying. So, I wish the movie had this. You know, it, like, it misses this aspect of what is so enchanting about Flor Delacour. I mean, I think just her beauty. I think the movie could lay on that alone, that Ron's like, wow, you know. Yeah, I mean, I suppose What a beautiful so. woman. It is interesting, though, in the book sense to note that uh, Ron and possibly other students who were easily influenced under the um, Confundist curse um, were imper- Imperio, I apologize, Imperio, yep. um, were essentially still hypnotized by the Vila's power. So you think back at the World Cup, yep. how Ron and tons of other guys, Stan Shunpunk, everybody was just like lying about their professions and just doing all this stuff for the Vila. And when we get to see Ron under the imperious curse, he's obviously easily manipulated. Sure, and it, sure. and it even has this long-lasting effect. Whereas Harry, it doesn't work on. Mm-hmm. Harry doesn't have the same effect with the Vila. He's not as he's not as well. I mean, but like yeah, entranced as someone like Ron, as some of these other boys as she walks by. So it is very interesting to see that maybe this part of his brain, maybe um, you know, his ability to have that be easily manipulated is just something that is very strong for him. Whereas oculumency, yeah, right, not a strong suit. You know, not not letting Voldemort into his brain, correct, is a little different. But I just think that it's pretty interesting that he is able to kind of. Keep the desire of the Vila out of his system. Yeah, and, and you're right. It, this this keeps going to what the characters that the author mm. is creating. I mean, Ron is impressionable. You know, Ron. You're right. The Imperious Curse. All of these things. And 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 Hermione and, and Harry can laugh, and they can they can kind of bust on Ron mm-hmm. for how he's acting with with uh, Flor Delacour and the fact that. He's just so enchanted. I know I keep using that word, but it's just he's he can't even speak to her properly. Yeah, like it's cute. I just I love this. And also it just reminds you that these kids are getting older. Once again, um we we had, we had the Uranus joke before, mm-hmm. and now we have this scene too. Yep. Um it just keeps reminding you that these kids are getting older. There are feelings that are being felt, and Ron is feeling all of the feelings. <laughs> Poor Ron, as a fourteen-year-old boy would. <laughs> That's true. Oh my goodness gracious! So of course, then we have so on October thirtieth, Dumbledore welcomes everybody. Welcome. I loved. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, ghosts, and most particularly guests. And I love that the ghosts get to have that. He doesn't yeah. say, like, faculty, staff, those are included in the ladies and gentlemen, but he really still points out the ghosts. And this is just another beautiful way that the author is able to still interweave the fact that even though the ghosts aren't a huge presence right now, you know, we're not hanging out with Sir Nicholas and learning about the Death Day party and all this kind of stuff, but they're still referenced. They're yeah. still like this is these members are still here because obviously they play major roles inside this story. So I just I don't know I liked that little kind of out on the one. ghosts, kind of out. You're just rude. <laughs> Am I rude? <laughs> you just are. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. Just because I'm out on something that you're not, that means I'm rude. No, <laughs> get out of here with that. No, I'm just saying that you are rude. Fact. <laughs> True. <laughs> Very. Oh you know what, gracious. Mary? Bam! Just like that. A winner! Okay. We get a couple of funny moments with Ron and the food. The bouillabaisse, bays, for yeah, example. Yeah, right. So, you know, he's looking at, there's there's all these foreign dishes to really, which I thought was really cool and very kind as yeah. Hogwarts, as the host school, that, you know, they realize that people coming from different countries and different cultures may eat different things. So they make sure to have meals that people might like. And Hermione's even able to point out that that's bouillabaisse. She had it when she was on holiday in France, yeah. which was previously mentioned uh, in the earlier book. Was it this book or the earlier book? Like when they're on the summer holidays. Yeah, it was the previous book. Yeah, isn't was, that crazy? Yeah, yeah. So I just love once again having this continuity that like, oh yeah, we will once again mention that Hermione traveled to France on right, holiday. Right. I don't know, it's just, just neat. Yeah, oh, it's consistent world building. Yes. It, it shows you that you know, uh, uh, again, it, it's these little teeny tiny details that the author is putting in that uh, 
make the world feel lived in. Mm-hmm. You know, in like in 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 keeping with that world being lived in, there's also something to be said too. Uh, of we were talking earlier about the the houses choosing. I'm sorry, the the schools choosing choosing which houses they're going to sit with. Um. I mean, Durmstrang going to the Slytherin table. I mean, Durmstrang has a focus on the dark arts. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. So for them to sit with Slytherin also feel, it just feels natural. It just feels lived in. It mm-hmm. feels real. Mm-hmm. Uh, like these people are making actual choices. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we get some more of the Vila aspect. And then, of course, Barty Crouch Sr. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and good distinction <laughs> uh, Barty Crouch is there and oh my gosh I'm blanking on the other bloke's name Ludo, Ludo Bagman. Bagman I gotcha uh, are, are arriving and there's like this whole hubbub like what are they doing here they organize this flipping event right. okay <laughs> this is what they do so of course they're going to be and that's when they acknowledge that they in fact are going to be the um, judges that the three heads of school plus Ludo and Barty Sr. Yeah. are going to be judging this Also, another huge difference from the film. The no Ludo Bagman? No, and, but, and the fact that Barty Crouch and, it, it, Sr. Uh, and, and Ludo Bagman, ain't, they're not judges. It's, it, they don't even really pay attention to the judges in, in the film. There's, like, there's no attention to it whatsoever. Yeah, they don't make a big hubbub of judges. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like a, it's it's like just, a big difference. It's, they're, unne- they're, it's unnecessary. Yes. They gloss over it. Yeah, would you but... would you say that the film does a good job in these aspects of the adaptation? Yes. I yeah. think I would probably because Ludo Bagman essentially they don't need is Ludo unnecessary. Ba- I do not envy the writers that had to sit down and yeah. woodshed and and take apart this book and create an entirely different story and yet still have a lot of the things and themes and then have to bring it to the author and be like, so here's what we got. What can we cut? Yeah. You know, like I know they did that. Um, for example, in book five, they want to cr- cut out creature, right? The house. Elf, and she's like, and oh, no. she said, Oh no, you no, no, can't. No, 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 no. <laughs> we you, need him. You could cut out Ludo Bagman. You here, can't. Here, here's the live creature. sound of the author. No, God, please. No, yes. no. <laughs> that's right. No. Yes. Sorry, author. No! We're doing so, it. <laughs> um, so then we go on and they have the Goblet of Fire and it's this grand unveiling. And we get to know a little bit more. Barty Crouch Jr. just looks like a really cranky bloke. And Ludo Bagman, super happy. Kids are already loving him. Um, and they take out the Goblet of Fire, we, which I read earlier. Dumbledore drew an age line around the Goblet of Fire. Yes. He and the other headmasters, because of the previous deaths and how dangerous it is, they know what the tournament entails. They decide that this is going to be how they keep kids out. It's not that the Goblet of Fire itself will not accept someone who's younger. Right. It's it the enchantment. the age line that, that Dumbledore There's a big makes. distinction. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also he really makes sure that we understand that by putting your name in the Goblet of Fire, if it's chosen... Is a it constitute a binding magical contract. There can be no change of heart once you become a champion. Please be very sure that you are wholeheartedly prepared to play before you drop your name in the goblet. So it's important for us to, to stick to that because Harry is only 14. Harry did not put his name in the goblet of fire, and yet he is still chosen by the Goblet of Fire. Mm-hmm. Henceforth, this magical binding contract, what I don't think gets enough weight in the movie. Like, they're just like, whatever, it's a magical binding contract. But when you think about the unbreakable vow that happens between Snape and Narcissa, you know, and the and the lev- the the really importance that is put upon that, that mm-hmm. this is a magical bind. This is a magical contract. Like, I wanted them to go a little more in depth. Like, Almost uh, kind of like the unbreakable vow. And in, in the importance in the movie. That's what yes. I'm saying. Yeah. Like it. And, and I mean, not to the level of, you know, that if you did, if you broke the unbreakable value, you'd croak. As a viewer. But meaning I, like, but like, meaning like, this is a big time deal. You, you cannot just say no. Because, you know, when, when the headmasters and Minerva McGonagall are in there and the dreaded, did you put your number in the goblet out of fire? Happens, you know, and they're all like, oh, dumb, da, da. That is going to be the new <laughs> sound because that, that was a clean clip. Thank you. That's going to be every time you, that, that happens, we're doing that. Thank you. And you hear Madame Maxine, <laughs> this is not right. You know, she's just like all right. upset. And they say, well, too bad. Too Sorry. bad it's a magical contract, and it kind of just has this like, what do you mean too bad? You're 
dumb, out this friggin' Dumbledore. Right. Like you can bippity boppity boo whatever it is that you want. So I think that we needed a little bit more because it kind of left me feeling like. Well, why can't you just say no? Like it le- it makes me feel that Dumbledore is just like whatever, guys. He's my pawn. Like it's okay. Yeah, and, and like I I remember Body in the film, but senior, uh, saying, "Well, no, you, you, this is a, this is a magic con- contract. Like you can't." You can't just not do it, but you're right. It feels glossed over yeah. in the film. Yeah, we're seeing a lot, a lot of um, uh, diverging Which needs methods to here be- between the film and the book, especially in this chapter, I feel like. So um, we get this really weird situation between Karkoff. And- well, actually, you know oh, yeah. what? Before we get into that, because we're talking about the Goblet of Fire and the magic behind it yeah. and the magical contract behind yes. it. Like... <sighs> My my sense of the Goblet of Fire is that it is obviously very clearly a magical object, yes. and it, 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 the purpose behind it is that it's supposed to choose the most worthy candidates from each school. Correct. But it spits out two people from Hogwarts. So, because you haven't read the book, I'll help fill in this blank. And for that's you. what I'm getting at. Okay. And and if that's the case, <laughs> if that's the case, yep. can the Goblet of Fire actually be trusted to choose the most worthy of candidates? So. Once again, it's not about age. It is about worthiness. Right, okay? right, right. Barty Crouch Jr., which we're going to learn later in this book. So non-book readers, I'm sorry. I'm spoiling it's a spoil it. But the once podcast. again, this is Blake's, the only book that Blake hasn't read. So there's going to be a lot of me filling in blanks. Um, Barty Crouch Jr. obviously doesn't get stopped by the age line. Mm-hmm. Which is why Albus Dumbledore later asks him, later asks Harry in the next chapter, did you have an older student put it in for you? Right. Because older students could put their names, could have put their yeah, names they, in. Yeah, because they're crossing the age line. It, yeah, the, because they wouldn't have been bounced back like Fred and George, for example. But, right. but knowing, Dumbledore probably knowing, the goblet's not going to pick a little kid. That little kid isn't necessarily worthy. So Barty Crouch Jr. was... But, well, a, but was, there's was, a big yeah, difference there. Sorry, was sorry. Was able to cross the age line. Yes. He confunded the Goblet of Fire. He confused the cup. He did a very um, important spell, confused the cup into thinking there were four schools. Okay. And he put Harry's name in as the only student in that four school. Gotcha. So Harry didn't necessarily compete against Cedric for the title of being a Hogwarts champion. Right. It was like if, if he was just an un- unopposed up, candidate. Exactly. Right. He made up a new school. So, and he told the the goblet, there's four schools now. It's not the Triwizard. And yep. that was how he was able to make this happen. All right. Understood. Understood. Okay. Fair You're enough. welcome. Fair enough. You're welcome. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. So, let's get back. Karkaroff meets up with Harry Potter. Super awkward. We need that sound bite. Because uh, he, he's like walking by and Karkaroff looks at him. Oh, Harry freaking Potter. Oh, sorry. That's what I want him to say. Like Karkaroff just walks by and he I'm stops. Harry freaking Potter. And that's basically what happened. <laughs> and it's like, Karkaroff, everyone knows that Harry Potter is at Hogwarts. Right. Everyone knows this, but it's like, oh my gosh. Well, it, it shows you. It's you. Uh, uh, a predisposition, I would think, of Karkaroff to gravitate towards people of not like big power, but of fame mm-hmm. and he, he latching. I mean, the way that he treats um, what, what's his name there? Uh, Crumb. I mean, it's like he, he's a, a puppy dog in his lap. And he's doing the same kind of here with Harry a little bit where he's just like Harry Potter. And I don't think it was I like you. So Karkaroff was a Death Eater. No, I know that. Karkaroff followed Voldemort. Harry Potter was the end of Voldemort, supposedly. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Not true. Um, so Karkaroff got into massive trouble. Yes. Then, up behind from both of them, you hear the voice, yeah, that's Harry Potter. It was Mad-Eye Moody. Right. Now, Karkaroff's wicked awkward because there's a lot of beef between them, which we will get to. Well, I also have a question here, too. And, and, and th- this is probably... Just me being me and conspiracy theorist. Oh, yeah. Does Karkaroff have an idea that this is actually Body Crouch Jr.? I don't think so. Because it's not explicit. I, I mean, if you wanted to take the text as it is, it makes sense. He's more freaking out because but, it's Mad Eye Moody. I know, I know. But the way that it, the, the when I read it, when I read it, I just read it like it's you. And he goes, yeah, it's me. 
and then they just continue on. I just like, does Karkaroff know at all? Does he have any inkling? Does he have any idea that this is not actually Mad Eye Moody? That this is actually Barty Crouch Jr. And and that to me kind of feels interesting, right? Because if he did, now he he must have some recognition that Lord Voldemort is back. And if he recognizes that this is actually Barty Crouch Jr., he is an active participant in allowing Harry to fall into the hands of Lord Voldemort. See what I'm saying? I appreciate that, but Alistair Murdy is the one that captured Cockroach. No, I so know. That's I know. more of I'm like just... the beef. You know what I mean? Oh, he looks I get at it. Him and he's like, "You were in my life, man." If you again, if you take the text Hate as it you. is, that makes sense. But like that part of me that just thinks maybe that there is just some little, mm, like a little oomph, a, a little bit more of an oomph into this. I don't know. I just throwing it out there. I don't know. We'll see. It, it, let the let the nerd clan decide. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm maybe I'm off my rocker. That's it's fine. I could be off my rocker. You know, what is interesting is what's going to happen in the next chapter. So can we just like sure, put a little pin in that sucker? Because sure. they do have some interactions that you can delve into this like okay. crazy Fair enough. theory. Fair I enough. love. Fair I'm here enough. for it. Okay. Um, here we go. It's Halloween. You ready? Yes. Everybody has a little sleepy sleep. They've got a nice little night. The Durmstrang Strang kids are sleeping in the ship. And the Bobatan are in their carriage. I don't know, man. I hope that those things are like nice and posh because that is a long time to have to stay on a ship or carriage. And how many? And how many people are in this carriage? Like, I know it's a big carriage, but bippity boppity boo, man. Like, how many? How many people you got in that carriage? How many? How many beds are there? Is this like one of those things with like with the tents? Maybe that's why I'm saying bippity boppity boo. Yeah, sure, fair enough. I got you. Um. So then here we go. Starting things off, Halloween morning. Fred and George Weasley. <laughs> Going at it. <laughs> these two, these two are the best. They just, they're just ranking on Hermione for a spew. And then they, um, and then they try this thing and they, they think that they got past the age line and then they just get, like they get pushed out and then they get, I love how Dumbledore doesn't like chide them like he he doesn't say you know you're blah, 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 blah. he didn't he didn't did you put your name in the goblet of the fire of him he he like laughs he laughs and he's like you know that what with the, your beards are that's the best i've ever seen mm-hmm. and he doesn't tell them that they're wrong for trying yeah. see what i'm saying like yeah. it, it, he doesn't just say you're all suspended it's he, hey you know, you tried. I appreciate that. It's humorous. And of course, there's already a Ravenclaw and a Hufflepuff who are in there. Fun thing. Slytherin didn't try. Right. A Slytherin did not try. Which, I gotta tell you, doesn't make sense to me. Slytherins like to cheat sometimes. This one sure does, sitting uh, across from hey, me. Hey, cheaters want to win the most. So... I don't know if this was just the author leveling the playing field, trying to be like, listen, everybody's house cheats, not just the Slytherins. I've I've dragged Slytherin through the dirt for the past three books, so let's try to like even the playing field a little bit. I don't know. I just thought that was quite interesting. That uh, there was a Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and now two Gryffindors yes. who have beards and needed to be attended <laughs> to by Madame Pomfrey. Who knows what happened throughout the ra- later part of the day? Right, right. The latter but part at least of the at day? this point, again, the text is suggesting that it's it's Slytherin free, which is surprising. You would think that the author would specifically make mention of I one know. Slytherin. I know. Now we know that Slytherin puts their name in, of course, Warrington. Yes. But but yeah, I did find that very um, confusing in regards to the, the house. It's got to be intentional, Mary. Like you said, it has to be intentional. Just to give Slytherins a little bit more credit. A little bit of a break here. Maybe, maybe they're, they say that Dumbledore, like we're cunning, but that Dumbledore's more cunning. So we're not going <sighs> to mess with that. We'll go do something else. We'll just like prank the champions. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> just, just rank on people. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm all about the ranking on people life. Let's do it. There you go. That's why I'm a Slytherin. Because you're like, Malfoy doesn't do it. 
It's Malfoy's right. saying, like, it's too bad we can't do it. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to do it. Well, that's definitely Malfoy. But he doesn't put his name in. Because he's, because he's, he's too why much of a... Why would you not have? If you were an underage wizard, being that you're a Slytherin, why, what would have kept you from putting your name in the Goblet of Fire? Uh, well, if, all right, so that's a good question. You have to take two things under assumption. One, that I really want to do it. And two, that I would be brave enough to do it. So there's a difference, right? There's a difference because, like, I really, I'm a Slytherin, and maybe I'm a poor kid. Eh, I'm a poor kid. I'm so poor I can't even afford the old wow. I'm po, okay? But I need that money. So now I really need it. But am I brave enough to do it? Am I brave enough to go against the will of Dumbledore and the age line? Because I already full well know that, um, the greatest wizard of our age has done this thing. Yeah. I ain't smarter than the greatest wizard of our age. Ravenclaws think they are smarter, but continue. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> not surprised one of them. I'm smart it? enough to know I ain't screwing around with the age line. Okay. I'm going to end up like George and Fred with beards and yeah. warts and who knows. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows if the beard, you can cut the beard off. They're okay, Blake. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Bippity boppity boo. <laughs> so. Uh, what would keep me from doing it? Yeah, knowing that Dumbledore is the one that put this age line in there. And also being smart enough to know that if I'm younger, I probably don't know enough. Why All, all them kids died before. Why? Because they were too young. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me, you know what it reminds me of? Kid Nation. I'm oh. only in the third grade. Kid Nation, my friends. <laughs> Watch one of the worst TV shows oh, ever made. No. YouTube that. D- strongly disagree. One of the greatest television shows was, ever made. It was a an experiment, okay? Oh. When reality TV was really big, they Woo. decided, let's put kids in a city together and see what happens. Just an abandoned city and Lord of the Flies it. And they get Just. to earn root beer. <laughs> and they get to call their parents. <laughs> yeah, if you're really good and you win a challenge, you could call your mom. <laughs> Blake and I were addicted to this oh. show. <laughs> it was so bad and so sad. <laughs> Go out there, kill a chicken if you're hungry. <laughs> I'm only in the third grade. <laughs> the little girl that staged a protest. <laughs> to not kill the chickens. Oh, bless her heart. <laughs> little Hermione Granger in the making. <laughs> oh, and then the, t- the girl Taylor, deal with it. Yeah. Oh, that was No great. one else gets this place. I don't care. You and I. Go, now you have homework. Go watch oh Kid God, Nation. Don't. No, do it. Okay, so speaking of Hermione Granger and Spew, oh, it's the best. they end up going to Hagrid's to hang out for Halloween Day. And I think it's really cute. It's a Saturday. There's yeah. no Quidditch going on. So <laughs> they could either hang out in Gryffindor Tower, go to the library, and instead they go to Hagrid's. He makes them a terrible casserole that has talons in it. Ugh. Uh, he's wearing an outfit. He has his hair all done all nice. Oh, it's because he's got a cry. That's right. He's got a Maxine. And Hermione tries to get him to join. Yeah, you don't want no, you don't want none of the spew either. No, he does Because he knows better. Um it's really interesting how he ends up talking about it. Um he flatly refused to join Spew. S-P-E-W. Yes. It'd be doing them a, an unkindest Hermione, he said gravely, threading a massive bone needle with thick yellow yarn. It's in their nature to look after humans. It's what they like, you see? You'd be making them unhappy to take away their work and insulting them if you tried to pay them. But Harry said Dobby free, and he was over the moon about it, said Hermione. And we heard he's asking for wages now. Yeah, well, you get weirdos in every breed. <laughs> I'm not saying there isn't the odd elf who'd, who'd take freedom, but you never persuade most of them to do it. No, nope, nothing doing Hermione. Right. Um, you know what it comes down to, I think? Harry, no, not Harry. Um, Hagrid just knows. What, what are we doing here? What, what are we doing? Get out of here. You, 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 you're taking on a cause that you got no point in having any causes for. And he, so what? Dobby's a little weird. Dobby's a little weird. It's okay. It's all right. He's fine. See what I'm saying? I think it just continues to prove the point that you don't know, Hermione. 
you don't know that would actually make them unhappy. Um, That's I'd, what I'm saying. I'm interested to know, like Hagrid obviously spends his time with magical creatures. Yep. So I feel like within that, he probably has spent some time with house elves and gotten to know them. He obviously didn't have like a lot of friends while he was at Hogwarts. So mm-hmm. part of me wonders maybe if he got a little friendly with, not a little friendly, <laughs> but like friendly with house elves. You know what I mean? He's sure. just, he knows about the centaurs and I feel like he gives creatures of all shapes and sizes and all the kinds of, of, of mental capacities yep. lots of respect so out of everybody so far you know i i'm i'm appreciating hagrid and i'm appreciating him saying no you know we just had fred and george say we spent time in the kitchens they love what they're doing right and we have hagrid who has the, the credibility of being someone who knows magical creatures yeah. who most likely knows uh from from first in experience but what it really comes down to is hermione Go ask the house elves. Exactly. And it comes back to, I know we've made this this uh, comparison a lot, and I'm going to continue to make this comparison until everybody gets it banged into their head. Ew, I don't want it banged into my head. Just it's, like soaked in over time. It's Like the, tiramisu. <laughs> Boozy tiramisu. The, the good kind. Fire whiskey. <laughs> Joke's on you. Um <laughs> One of the greatest Mary and Blake media moment, oh fa- Hall of Fame moments in history. Um, the fact, it goes back to Downton Abbey. These people enjoy their job. They take pride in that job. And I remember feeling like, feeling bad almost until um, the episode. Until that episode where Mosley says, No, this is my, like, I take pride in this. I don't, I don't feel bad for me. I like this. Mm-hmm. I like preparing. I like serving. It, it, this is. This is my gift. Yeah. I can do this. So let, like, I'm fine. I kind of want to know, like, what do house elves do who don't work for a house, who don't work for Hogwarts? Are they homeless? Are there homeless house elves? Oh, God, you're so, so Hermione. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, I don't want to get into that conversation. I don't know. Just asking. No, don't ask that. Confess. Okay, so Hagrid, he's all done up. He puts on really stinky perfume. We, of course, find out that he's just like absolutely infatuated with Madame Maxine. Yeah. And I think it's so funny that Ron is the one that points it out um, to say like, oh, look, as he's you know showing them that uh, Hagrid is misty eyed. Oh, so sweet. So sweet. <laughs> and then Hermione, he's going up to the castle with her. I thought he was waiting for us. <laughs> Ron, he fancies her. Well, if they end up having children, they'll be setting a world record. I bet any baby of theirs would weigh a ton. So they're just, their minds are blown. It makes me think of like when. Um, kids aren't used to seeing their parents canoodle and go on dates or, you know, if their parents um, are separated and they have a, a single parent and that person goes out on dates, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, like seeing these adult figures or like um, a treasured aunt or yeah, uncle, yeah, yeah. like our my brother just got married and our kids were like, "Ew, no, you can't be married because they just they know this person only as their single form. Right. You know, is Hagrid having a crush on Madame Maxine because... It's it. She's yeah. a giant. Yeah, and like that's the first giant that he's seen in like a long time. That... Yeah, and she's dressed pretty, and she's oh, that's what I'm elegant. Saying. Like, yeah. She, yeah, is it like? Is it just because she's the only thing around? I mean, she's also lovely and smart sure. and well put together. Yeah, I don't think like. Let's be real. The uh, blast ended scroots are practically his size, and he's not like, oh, you're attractive. It's not just the size. Yeah, it's no, but it's the like the thing. It's that the... it's like, you're someone who gets me. Yeah. It might, you know, also from my uh, assumption from the film, the Madame Maxime and Hagrid thing was already a thing prior to the film. I don't know. That's the way that I took it. Okay. See what I'm saying? Like I, yeah, I took I didn't it as take though it that way, I took it as though like they knew each other before. I didn't take it that way, but you didn't? just because of the book. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um so we get Victor Crumb, we get Fleur Delica, we get Cedric Diggory, and then of course Harry's name gets pulled out of the fire. I like I kinda do like the fact that the Goblet of Fire picks Cedric. I'm glad to hear that, Blake. I can't, I mean, well, first I so have to... Say it out loud. Uh, okay, you're welcome. Uh, but no, I kind of like it because Ron has just been all over Cedric this entire time. 
Which I'm sorry, just because he's handsome. Yeah. He's actually quite worthy. And that's what I'm getting at. I, I like the fact that even Voodoo though uh, even though it's been like a thing, the the Goblet of Fire still recognizes that Cedric is actually a pretty good kid. But Ron hasn't really gotten to know Cedric. You know, sure. Harry had and some he's jealous interactions. Because Hermione with, likes him. Yeah. yeah. And Harry had some good interactions with him, you know, when the um the Quidditch game and everything and Harry got hurt. Cedric, you know, made sure that it was everything was a okay, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, to Ron is just like this is the pretty boy that everyone lusts after, Mister Perfect, you know. And Ron is the opposite of that. I definitely know that in high school there were some pretty girls who I just didn't know that well. That I'd be like, of course she gets that. Of course she does. Yeah, like of yeah, like uh huh. Oh, and really, probably that woman worked very hard and deserved it and everything. But to me being the fact that I err on the side of Ron Weasley sometimes, I definitely think I would have mumbled, bunk, rumbled under my breath. <laughs> Do you know... <sighs> of course the homecoming queen gets to also win this award. Of course she if, does. If, <laughs> if the Harry Potter series came out like 10 years prior to this, uh-huh. do you know who would have been Cedric Diggory? Leonardo DiCaprio? No. Come Ooh. on now. 10 years prior. 10 so years. Looking- maybe 15 years prior. So we're thinking, what, 90? In mid-90s. I don't know, Blake. Oh, come on. What are you, no, I don't Who know. Who I basically modeled my life after. Freddie Prince Freddie Jr.? Freddie Prince no, Jr. No, he would not. No, he would not. Cedric is essentially the Zack Siler of Harry Potter. He, he, from She's All from That. From She's All That. Come on. No. Come on. No. You don't think so? No. no he's totally Zack Siler. Freddie Prince Jr. would be would totally be the best Cedric. I think Freddie Prince Jr. comes off like I know what I got, <clears throat> and I don't think Cedric is that way. I think he's a bit more humble. You think so? I do. Hmm, I think he is a humble Hufflepuff. <laughs> <laughs> so there, my friends, is the chapter. Oh, good one. All right, you ready for your different perspective? <laughs> sure. All right, let's uh, let's get it done, shall we? We shall. Holy cricket! You're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger, and you are... <laughs> Ludo Bagman, baby! Ludo! Hey! Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Great to see you. Great to see you, Ludo. Oh, my gosh. Hey, did you pay the Weasleys yet? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so, I love my life. Yeah? I love well, why my life. Why wouldn't you? You've got the best job in the world. Yeah, sure. I love sports. I love games. Everybody I love loves winners. You. I love losers. I love them all, okay? <laughs> I get to show up banquets two days in a row. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I don't have to make anything. No all Hot Pockets food. for me. No. <laughs> None of that. Nah. You don't want no Oval Redenbacher pop- popcorn. No, no. Get out of here. Uh, multi-course, some booyah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you, I, I know you don't know, know how to say it. It's okay. It, you know, it's just good. No, you know. We That's only, all it is. We only played in France twice, so <laughs> I didn't. they didn't what? have fries, and I was really confused. Yeah, well, why don't they have French fries in France? It Which don't I make call sense. chips, because I think I'm from, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. But I got to tell you. Uh-huh. I love my life so much. Oh, I, I I can see why. You walk into places, people know you. People love me. They're buying you dinners. I, I I love it. I get to stay in a wicked nice bed. Yeah. There's like a hundred house elves here. They just take care of everything. Bippity boppity boo. What do you want? New toothbrush? Bam. You need a new bathroom? You want your pillow fluffed? Love my life. Did they make the little animals for you out of the towels? I told them that I particularly like the elephant one. <laughs> Yes, sir. That's what I do. The only thing that I'm going to have a little bit of an issue with is Harry Potter was chosen by the Goblet of Fire. Yeah, how are you going to handle that? That's a, that's a problem. It's not my problem. It's Barty Crouch's. Oh, oh hey, I'm just right. here for the fun, man. <laughs> I'm just here for the fun. Peace out. <laughs> oh, good job, Mary. Yet. As always. As always. I'm like, who am I not really <laughs> doing? <laughs> no, so there good. you go. Yeah, you know, you perfectly capture Ludo Bagman. Like that's the he's the Yolo, big man. He's the big loud. Everybody loves me. I love everybody. Yeah. You, the whole thing. All yeah. right. Uh we got some emails and questions and stuff like that. Are you ready to do done. that? Let's do it. Oh Miles Hey. All right, this one comes from Jen. Hi Jen. Jen says the following. 
just wanted to express my deep appreciation for the Potterverse and all of the work that you put into it. I work at a, as a hospital social worker in southern United States and began rereading the Harry Potter books again to help with the stress and anxiety that this second wave of COVID has caused as the hospitals are you a virtual hug. pretty much overrun. And she said, to put it lightly... Not great, Bob. She actually put that in there. Just throw that in there. Well done, Jen. I started looking for Harry Potter podcasts to listen to along with my reread, hoping to find some kind of kindred spirits that could help bring a little Lumos in this time mm. of Knox. And you two have done exactly Yay. that. There have been days with on, uh, when the only laugh or non-work thought I had came from listening to the Potterverse. So I just had to say thank you. I just finished reading Goblet of Fire when I started listening to your podcast from the beginning two weeks ago. And now that I am all the way caught up with the Potterverse, I am excited to continue Woo! this joyful journey with you and the hashtag NerdClan. By the way, go to jointhenerdclan.com, become a valued member, an official member of the Nerd Clan. By the way, Jen, I want to do this. Well, first we have to do this for her. New listener, thank you so much. Jen, you've been working hard. And you listen to a lot of episodes of the Potterverse. That's like upwards of like 60 some odd episodes in Mm -hmm. two weeks. Jen, email me at maryandblakemedia at gmail.com. I'm going to send you something from the Mary and Blake store. Yes. Okay. You're helping take care of many, many people. And we adore you and we're thankful for for your time. And we're glad that we could bring you some Lumos. That's that's excellent. So again, email me, maryandblakemedia at gmail.com. All right. The next one comes from Solange. she says, I'm a listener of your podcast since season three Yay. of Outlander. Did a fast sauce and I. And wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for the countless hours of fun I've had listening to you. In your latest podcast for chapter 14 of The Goblet of Fire, you discussed if Dumbledore knows that if uh, Maddie, if Mad Eye Moody is Barty Crouch Jr., I must confess that this point has always disturbed me. Mm. I cannot imagine that Dumbledore doesn't realize that it's not his friend. I mean, they're supposed to be close and have uh, to fought together in the first war against Voldemort in the First Order of the Phoenix. And as friends, you regularly speak about events or discussions from the past. And Dumbledore had the whole year to figure it out. He should have the best memory, be the best actor, and know how Mad Eye Moody would react in every situation. And if Dumbledore never sees through him, that would be a problem. And it is hard to believe for me. In conclusion, there is, for me, three possibilities. Count them. Three. One, two, three. Bring it on. Dumbledore knows that there is no textual evidence of it in the book, but he knows, but there's just no suggesting it from the book. Okay. Uh, two, it's a massive plot hole. Fair. And number three, they spend no time at all together during the whole year. I vote three! Um... I vote three. You want to know why? Why? He's essentially the principal of a school full of magical kids. He's got all of these different co-workers. You know Snape complains every single Um, week. um, Excuse me, Abbas. (laughs) I just wanted to let you know that um, I wouldn't mind taking the Defense Against the Dark Arts position halfway through the year, seeing as how (laughs) Madame Moody continues. Oh, hold on. Wait, Mary. Holy cricket. You're Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm Hermione Granger. And you are... Okay, go ahead. I was already said with Snape. <laughs> and um, just want to make sure... I wanted to follow up on yeah. last week's meeting. Yeah, we want, to, we want to circle back. Yeah, yeah, I'm still upset about all of this. So, um... Um, why don't you pencil me in for the same time next week? Because <laughs> we're going to have a, a, an eventual follow-up conversation. Every week until I get the position. <laughs> Thanks. Uh. So between uh, the regular school being totally annoyed by his staff, being totally annoyed by kids doing stupid things, because let's be real, they're teenagers and that's okay. Sure. And having to deal with, like, you know, hanging out with Madame Rose Murta, trying to figure out where Voldemort is, doing all the things he's got to do. Then on top of that, there's a Triwizard Tournament. I think Dumbledore's too busy this year. I think once the Dark Mark was shown and everything went down, the Triwizard Tournament yep. and um, the, the Goblet... Let's rewind. Everything that happened <laughs> at the was the World Cup. Yep. And I think his plate is too full. I think if there was ever a year to try to 
slip a little something past Dumbledore, it would be this year. All right. We ha- we do have some more emails and such and questions, but we will get to those next uh, episode. Thank you for sending. We're getting email after email after email from everybody. So I'm very happy. I'm very excited. Thank you so much for engaging. But we do have a little bit of a heart out tonight. So we're going to have to move on and close this show out for now. Marvin, do you have anything else to say about this chapter before we let it go? No, I'm ready to keep moving on. All right, let's do it. We want to thank you all so incredibly much, especially those of you who have left us a podcast review, particularly on the Apple Podcast app. I wanted to give a shout out to Devin King 5 been a Harry Potter fan for a long time. I'm a 22-year-old university student who is currently in a competition with my grandma to see who can finish book series first oh. and enjoy listening to this podcast at work after reading the chapters the night before. So, yay! Thank you so you much, know what Devin, I say to for that? tuning in. You know what I say to that? Go, Grandma. Oh, my God. Go, Grandma. Go, Devin. Go, go, go. Gonna beat you, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, thank you all who have taken the time, not just to hit that five-star review, but to take your time to write it. It really makes yes. a huge difference to us being able to get more Potter fans to find us. So if you haven't done that yet, take a moment this week, please, and leave us a review in Apple Podcasts. Also, too, we do need a new computer, and we are looking for a 1,000 members at jointhenerdclan.com. So please, if you want us to get a new computer, help us uh, and get the best content that we can possibly give to you, because ours is on the fritz, man. We would love for you to join the nerdclan.com. Go there, become a member, get all great stuff. On help that, us out. Yeah. On that note, my name is Mary. My name is Blake. Mischief managed. Mischief managed.